Welcome. I'm here with our Fluvial Geomorphology 101 instructor, Dr. David Williams, to tell you more about our upcoming two-part webinar. So David, what will you be covering in this session? The Fluvial Geomorphology will be covered in two portions, an hour and a half each. And the first part will be covering what is Fluvial Geomorphology, what are the terms in it, and what is the science. We'll talk about the river as a system, not as a certain portions of a system system, but the uh, river as a whole system that makes up the watershed area. Then we'll talk about rains relationship, which gives us an idea of if you do this to the water or sediment in a river itself, what is the response? We'll talk about watershed zones, we call upper, middle, and lower zones, and what happens in each of those zones of a water. Talk a little bit about the evolution of a channel in terms of how does it change its shape over time and in space. Channel stability and instability is next, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, how channels can uh, have banks that are failing and what's causing the failures uh, and how can we possibly fix them. This is then falls into the bank erosion and their causes. And then we'll talk a little bit about hydro, uh, hydrologic classification of a watershed, such as if uh, it's a humid, is it a femoral stream, is it a, a semi-arid. Uh, so we'll talk about hydrologic classifications of a watershed. And then we'll talk a little bit about channel geometry and processes. What causes the channel to have its certain shape? What are the important ingredients that determines the width? depth and slope of a channel. So that's essentially part one. In part two, we'll talk a little bit of how the bed itself armors as a result of slow water going over it. That means how the bed itself in a stream gets coarser and coarser and coarser. Then we'll talk a little bit about floodplain features, overbank areas, terraces, those definitions. Then we'll talk a little bit about channel patterns and the features of these patterns, such as meander, braided. How do we measure? The, uh, the, the important facets of the meander patterns and their uh, channel patterns. We'll talk a little bit then about the stream classification systems. And this is where we'll go over very quickly the Rostian method for stream classification. We'll talk about uh, information related to bank flow indices because uh, identification, identification of bank flow conditions is a very important aspect of determining the, the features of a bank, features of a stream that uh, is further used for that stream classification. Talk a little bit about what's, what are the requirements for geomorphic and stream assessments, uh, because uh, most every watershed study requires a geomorphic and stream assessment. So we'll talk about what are the ingredients in such a study. And then related to that, we'll talk about the geomorphic data collection, what are the important pieces of data that has to be put to geomorphic assessment. Sounds like a great series full of information. And to dig a bit deeper, what new concepts will you be introducing? Fluvial geomorphology is based upon looking at a river system as a whole. Hydraulics has a tendency to look at a river cross section by cross section by cross section. And so but fluvial geomorphology looks at the the whole pattern of the river itself. And so we're actually taking a step back to look at the river as a whole and how it changes and how it's got to its state and what's the possible changes in the future to the formation of this river, the location of it, and how it's morphing or geomorphing over time and space. And so it's a step back, but it's also an important step to, to go through if we're going to do a stream restoration after a, a geomorphic assessment. Sounds like we'll be covering a lot of ground. And how does this course go beyond just theory? In the fluvial geomorphology, I have to theory. And, uh, and I will present those theories. This theory says this. And what it's really saying in relationship to the real world is that it can affect this. And so I will do a direct tie from not just sitting on the theory and let it rest, but applying that theory to real world circulations that you have a gut feeling of, yes, I see that. I see if you change this, if you do that, that this is the result of that action. And that action may be human-induced action 
were naturally induced action. And that naturally induced action may be things such as we discussed earlier, climate change. And speaking of putting practicalities to theories, what real-world applications will you be going over? In fluid geomorphology, we don't have a real-world application. We show examples of the real world, but an application is really more in when you go into such activities such as stream restoration. That's where the action happens. But what fluid geomorphology is, is all about is it will set the stage for understanding the processes understanding the causes and effect. And so that will set the stage for knowing how to go about doing your stream restoration. And so that's why we have a master series that one logically falls from one to the other to the other. But in fluid geomorphology, we don't actually do design. We talk about dimensioning. We talk about how things got to a certain way. But the design portion, or how we use the application of fluvial geomorphic concepts will be used more extensively in doing the actual stream restoration portion. Excellent. This course will be a good precursor to our upcoming stream restoration course. And one last question for now. Why is this course essential for professionals working with erosion control or in the stormwater field? Uh, fluid geomorphology is very important to mostly the erosion control specialist because if you're walking in the river and trying to determine what's the proper method for, uh, for, let's say, rehabilitating an unraveling stream, you have to know that are we just putting a Band-Aid on this? Is this a system-wide problem? Or is it a problem that can actually be corrected by putting a, a, a Band-Aid on it on a certain small portion of a river system? What if the whole river is falling apart because of things such as global warming or urbanization or just uh, you know, healing just messing in the river? We have to understand is is it a system problem? The fluid geomorphology helps to determine if it's a system problem. Otherwise, you may just be fixing that bank, but everywhere else it's unraveling, and so fixing that bank is just throwing your money away. And so the rose control professional needs to understand if you're going to be actually fixing the problem or it's a futile effort, and you need to stand back and just let the river do what it needs to do, or we have to make sure that our solution covers the whole reach. That means not just 100 foot of repair. We may have to talk about thousands of feet of, of rehabilitation. Because again, you may be just wasting your money spending 100,000 or a million dollars on this certain stretch, and the river circumvents it, goes on the other side. And so that's very important to the erosion control professional. For stormwater professionals, it's important for fluid geomorphology because stormwater People are interested in such locations of intakes and water outtakes. For instance, what if uh, you have a water treatment plant and you're pulling water out of the river itself and you have these facilities that are going to pull the water out? Take it to the water treatment plant, treat it, and then distribute it to the homes in fact have you. However, it would be interesting to know that this from fluvial geomorphic analysis that this meander is moving. And it's going to get worse. And this meander is going to cause your bank to road out. And then your facilities that you had just spent millions of dollars putting in to extract the water properly is going to be undermined. For things such as outtakes, where you take a, a wastewater treatment plant that takes water from the sewer system, treats it, and puts it back into the that stream system location has outlet works on it that may also be endangered by a bank that's eroding or a whole system that's uh, unraveling. So that's how the fluvial geomorphic uh, sciences are important for both and erosion control professionals. Great. Thanks, David. That's all we have time for right now. If you want to learn more from David, join us for our two-part Fluvial Geomorphology 101 webinar starting on June 16th. You can register today for this webinar and his stream restoration webinar at foresteruniversity.net. And if you want to hear more from David, check out his other videos on our Forestry U YouTube channel.